Today we'll be talking about the GSI Adair Pro VEMP Analysis Module. The VEMP Analysis Module will appear on the opening screen of the Adair Pro software. It's different than the four test modules in that you only access the VEMP Analysis Module when you're done collecting your CVEMPs or OVEMPs and you need to analyze. <clears throat> Today we're going to be covering how to use the VEMP analysis module and just very briefly before we do that I want to cover a few things on CVEMP and OVEMP. CVEMP is part of the test battery for patients with dizziness or vertigo and it's generated from the saccule which lo is located in the cochlea and it occurs in response to a very loud sound or a, a large vibration. It's recorded from the contracted sternocleidomastoid muscle, the SCM muscle, which runs from behind the ear to the sternum. The amplitude of the CVEMP waveform scales in proportion to the tonic EMG activity. So that means the stronger the contraction, the bigger the CVEMP. So in this example, you can see in order to contract the SCM muscle, the patient is lifting and holding their head off the table. That would have to occur for the duration of the test. For OVEMP, it's also a part of the test battery for patients with dizziness or vertigo and is also generated from the inner ear, the utricle of the cochlea, and the superior vestibular nerve in response to a loud sound or vibration. And it's recorded from the extraocular muscles. Similar to CVEMP, the patient also has to do something during the collection, and that is stare with their eyes open upward at least 35 to 40 degrees or toward the ceiling for the duration of the test. While the VEMPs are collected differently, they're analyzed similarly in that an amplitude asymmetry ratio is calculated, which is the difference in amplitude between the right and the left sides. So this is the calculation that would occur. You can also obtain a, an OVEMP threshold and there are other ways to analyze, but this is the primary measure. The VEMP analysis module features the ability to mark the OVEMP and CVEMP waveforms. It will automatically calculate the asymmetry ratio for you and when you save the record, it'll automatically create a report in the EP module. So the event analysis module is outside the EP collection module. Once you've marked them and saved them, those waveforms will be stored in the EP module for future. The VEMP analysis module also includes the ability to use rectification, which is a way to correct for asymmetrical muscle contraction during CVEMP collection using pre-stimulus EMG activity. It also allows you to view each sweep in, a, in the recording of the VEMP and the ability to cull or exclude sweeps either manually or automatically from the grand average based on standard deviation from the mean EMG activity. So I'll show you that in a moment. There are three VEMP protocols within the EP module. OVEMP protocol and a CVEMP protocol with no block averaging. There's also a CVEMP protocol with block averaging and it's recommended that you use this protocol if you're going to use rectification or if you're interested in culling and viewing each of the sweeps. The reason you don't want to use this routinely is it takes longer. So anytime you use block averaging, it lengthens the amount of time it takes because it has to store the information for each block. So only use the CVAMP with block averaging if you're going to use rectification or culling. So how does it work? Well, you're going to launch the EP software or the Adair Pro software and you're going to enter the patient name from there. Then you're going to launch the EP module and collect your VEMPs. Once you're done, you're going to open the analysis module, select the waveforms that you want to analyze, mark the N1 and P1, save the record, go back to the EP module and load the report 
and you're good to go as far as editing, etc. So that's a general flow. So let me show you how this works. So this is the EP module. There already is um, two waveforms, a right and a left. Uh, CVEMP that was already collected and those are the only two waveforms for this patient. There are two waveforms in when I select load EP file. So I'm done with my VEMP. These look pretty good. I'm going to simply navigate over to the analysis module and the first thing that will appear is open records. So if you have more than one VEMP per ear you'll see a list here. I only have one so I'm going to select OK. So I'm in the calculation screen, which is the default, and I have to mark my N1 and P1s for both waveforms. And while you're doing that, you can see the asymmetry ratio is automatically updated as you move your markers. You can view the P1N1 latency as well as the amplitude relative to zero. Once I'm done marking, I'm going to save that record, and then I'm going to return to the EP module and load my report. So when you load a report, it will store the displayed data and you can load the report. Here are the marked waveforms that came over from the VEMP module and I can proceed to organize them on the page, maybe edit, uh, maybe I want to remove the not rectified um, asymmetry ratio, write a report, etc. So also in saving that report, I also, it also saved two VEMP waveforms. So those marked waveforms are now, now part of the patient's EP record moving forward. So you really only need to use the VEMP analysis module when you're marking the waveforms. So the additional features that are included with the analysis module is rectification, viewing each sweep in a recording and ability to cull or exclude sweeps from the grand average. So remember the rectification is a way to correct for asymmetrical muscle contraction using pre-stimulus EMG activity. So each time a uh, the zero is reached that pre-stimulus um, activity is being recorded before the stimulus turns on for each sweep. So we're going to, for rectification, measure the pre-stim EMG, and our default setting is negative 60 to negative 20 milliseconds pre-stimulus. We're going to calculate the average EMG for the right and left CVEMP recordings, and then we're going to divide the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the VEMP by the estimate of the EMG muscle contraction. And there are two ways to calculate the average EMG. One is full wave rectification, which takes the average of the absolute amplitude of the pre-stimulus EMG versus RMS rectification, which, take, which takes the average of the root mean square amplitude of the pre-stimulus EMG. If you're interested in rectification, I would recommend that you review the literature uh, and you'll actually find that RMS is recommended. Therefore, we use that as our default setting. So with rectification, if the amount of tonic muscle activity of the SEM muscle is similar during the collection of the right and left CVEMPs, then the average EMG is going to be similar. And the asymmetry ratio, whether it be uh, between rectified and unrectified waveforms, is going to be very similar. If you're interested, here is a, a reference for you to look at where they looked at rectification or normalization using RMS, and they found that sometimes um, rectification will change a normal result to abnormal and vice versa. Now this was a population of normal patients, so that may vary um, in, a patient, in a population of patients that have actual disorders. So I would recommend reviewing this article if you're interested, as well as others, on um, rectification. So our default settings, if we look in the VEMP analysis software, uh, our default rectification calculation window is negative 60 to negative 20. You can change that, but we recommend at least 20 milliseconds of pre-stimulus time. 
if you're going to um, use rectification. And the type that we select by default is RMS. The asymmetry ratio, you can view either the rectified or the not rectified asymmetry ratio, and you can display either the rectified, non-rectified, or both waveforms in the software. So here's an example where the non-rectified waveforms are at the top, the rectified waveforms are at the bottom. Rectified waveforms are always smaller in amplitude than your raw data. Here you can see the asymmetry ratio is uh, that's displaying is the rectified asymmetry ratio. Here is that same data. We saved the record and it brought both the unrectified and the rectified waveforms into the EP module so you can report as you, as you want. A couple other things. Uh, as far as culling, uh, the default setting is manual. So you are able to view each of the sweeps. If you use block averaging, you'll see quite a few depending on how long the test is. By default, it's set to manual. You can change it and set it to automatic. And if you do that, you're going to want to set the waveform exclusion criteria, one, one and a half or two standard deviations from the mean of the EMG. So here you can see I'm in the culling screen. There's only two screens, the culling screen and the calculation screen. This is the culling screen, and I'm looking at right ear data. So here you can see all the waveforms are in bright red. If I wanted to deselect or exclude one of or more of the waveforms, I would simply uncheck them. If I'm going to do it manually, I can uncheck them there from um, on the side. So let me show you and review some of these settings. I'm going to start the video. Right now I'm in the default settings. And if I wanted to add my rectified waveforms to my display, I can um, simply select them. And here you can see rectified and unrectified. I have currently the not rectified asymmetry ratio, but I can change that to the rectified asymmetry ratio. If I'm interested in culling right now, it's set to manual, but I could change that to automatic, and then I would select my criteria if I wanted to enable that. Okay, if I go over to the culling screen, here you can see my left ear data, and there's quite a few. These are actually a sweep, a block, which is two sweeps. I can deselect them from the grand average if I wanted, and I can do that manually, and I can do the same thing on the right side. So once I've gone to the culling screen and I go back to the calculation, my P1N1 markers have moved back to the start, and that's because if you exclude waveforms, it will alter the grand average and therefore potentially alter your marked points. And then finally, to go back to the default settings, I just go to the settings drop down and I'm back to the default. Couple tips. If uh, you're going to use VEMP analysis module, you want to make sure that you enter the patient name from the opening window or open the patient from the opening window as opposed to the EP module. So always start with that opening window and that's what we recommend for all our test modules. The other thing to keep in mind is the VEMP protocol must be collected using an LLR or an MLR protocol type in order to view it in the VEMP module. So you can't view an ECOG in the VEMP module. You can only view an LLR or an M MLR protocol. The default protocols that are included in the EP module were created using the LLR test type. So you can load those up, customize them, and save them to fit your clinic protocols. And then finally, we do have quick guides to get you started in collecting OVEMP and CVEMP and using the new analysis module. So keep an eye out for those. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day.